Hey everyone, Cotton Candy TA, and today I'm showing you how I took a $500 account and turned it into $12,800 and the strategy I used to do it to get it there. Now, I have a competition called Chart Raiders, so I wanted to prove to everybody that this could be done with $500, that no matter what the amount is, whether it's uh, $5,000 to $500 or $500 to uh, $5,000 or, or whatever the amount, you can raise an account very fast if you know what you're doing in, uh, in day trading. So uh, in this video, I'm going to show you the strategy I did to get there and uh, how I did it. And again, the reason I did this is because I have a competition called Chart Raiders that I stream live on Twitch. Now, Chart Raiders is this uh, kind of cool thing where I train people. I give them 500 bucks each a week and I, and I watch them uh, trade. It's kind of like a day trading competition. So uh, my audience had said, Cotton, why don't you trade beside them and show them how it's done? Let's see how good you are. Ha <laughs> ha. Kind of like a, a joke, a bit of a joke kind of thing. And then uh, lo and behold, I, I accepted the challenge from my audience and I said, okay, we'll do this live. So I did it live on Twitch and uh, it was a lot of fun. People really enjoyed it. And uh, today I want to share how I did that and some of the strategies that I use to achieve this and how really anybody can do it. And it's, it's not as hard as people think. Um, there's just kind of a, you know, certain, certain type of style you have to trade in a certain way to do it. So uh, let's get into a few disclaimers first. I'm going to show my live order book um, and, and how I did this from zero. So everybody has uh, full proof and verification to, to back check this. I've cut it down to just the most important trades of the, uh, of the week. Um, oh, wait a second. Can we see the, the profits here? Let me move my camera to the other side. Yep. There we go. Just like that. So people can see the, uh, the profit amounts, the PNL, which is, uh, this category right here. And, um, let's talk about this. So, so the first thing that, uh, that I did here, let's make the camera a little bit smaller. Actually, the first thing that I did was I started with a $500 account and this chair is in the way. So we got to move this too. Cause it's weird to have a floating chair there. So the first thing I did was I took the $500 account that I had and I took a bunch of micro trades. So, so when I do this account building style, what I'm doing is I'm taking um, my first $500 account and, and I'm using 100x on, on every single trade. So I only trade 100x. And um, what I'm doing is I'm taking the full account and I'm putting it on every trade with a very tight stop loss. So I'm identifying as, as a first kind of point of contact. The very first trade that I get into has to be extremely good. I have to kind of map out my first trade of the week really good. Because my first goal is to kind of take my $500 account and grind it like crazy to um, the first thousand or two thousand dollars or fifteen hundred dollars. So I'm using a very tight stop loss. And the way I look at it is, if I was to climb this account to three thousand dollars and I lost that whole entire three thousand dollars, really, it's kind of a challenge I put myself on. It really means that I only lost five hundred, but it also on the other side allows me to compound it very fast. So if I started the week with a $500 account and um, I grew it to 3000 and then I lost 3000 in, in one trade because I was, for some reason, I decided, hey, I don't want to use a stop loss. I'm above that. I'm better than stop losses. Uh, I'm trading 100x. And if I get liquidated, oh, well, at the end of the day, I only lost the 500 I started with. And this allows me to kind of have freedom to scale up very fast. So I give myself a low starting amount of money and then I use it to grind like crazy. So my, the first half of my strategy is I am grinding like crazy. I am sitting there and taking trade after trade after trade, locking up $100, locking up $50, locking up $80, using $500 on 100x leverage. If I manage to catch a 1% spike, I get to take that 500 and turn it into 1,000. If I, if I only make 10 or 20%, I'm okay with that too. I'm basically sitting there grinding like crazy. So I am taking 20, 30, 40 trades. Um, it's, it's not really 40 trades. It's maybe a dramatization, but I'm taking like five, 10 trades to make sure I'm just clawing up every single piece because if I turn five to 550, it's just more power when I'm actually making the leverage. So it's compounding faster. So when I'm trading 100X, if I'm making 100% on 550, I have 1100, not you know 100% on 500, which would be 1000. And then, and then that turns into another 1%, which would be 2200 instead of 2000. So it does, it does add up. And that does pay for fees when you have that extra bit of money. And a big part of 100X trading is, is paying for fees. Now, I don't have any fee discount. This is on a default account that has no like referral fee structure, no rebate structure, nothing. I wanted to do this on an account that wasn't like one of these 15% off trading fee accounts or anything. So this account actually is just a raw unlinked account, no, no fees, um, reduced nothing. So this, this account is paying full fees. So what I want to do is I want to go through the order book at this point in, in the, um, at this, at this point in the dates. Um, if we were to go look back at one more date, you would see a list of like 
you're, you're going to see every single order on this book. So you see this one, here's a canceled order. This is a canceled order. This is, these are orders that aren't filled. So when you see the status, it says canceled here on the right side, they're just orders that I placed on the book that I removed for some reason or another. I'm thinking of where I want to place my orders. I'm removing them. And then I'm saying, no, this is not where I want to trade. This stuff is changing all the time. So I, I, I constantly take off and move orders. So there's about five or six pages you would see, um, for every, every couple hours I was trading where I took 500 and eventually grew it into about 1500, I believe it was, if I remember correctly, or, or 1400, that would make this video half an hour long. So I just kind of jumped to the point where I was done my grinding phase and I was taking the more important trades that were a bit higher risk that were, that were going to be the more big payoffs. So that was, um, where we're starting with the books here. And then as we go through the books here, you can see like the first kind of trades I I've, I've taken here. So what I'm going to do Actually, I'm going to take my camera off the screen for now, and then we can bring it back after because I want people to just be able to see kind of the whole entire order book here. Um, so, so first trade is fulfilled, uh, nine Bitcoin here, hundred X. Um, the price is an open short at 21,618. So let's go and look at what I was doing at that point. So at that point in the charts, I would have been here looking at a three minute hold level. This was kind of the reason I bought this level here is because it was kind of the final part of the move in the Valley. It had already laddered off this three minute move perfectly. And above this, it was a pretty polarized moment where above this, there's, there's quite a big um, gap. So if ultimately, if it were to break this level, it would be a huge breakout. So this is a relatively safe trade to take to start risking big amounts of money on because at this point, I had grinded my account up to, uh, to a pretty sizable amount. And, and this felt like a good trade to start um, taking risk on because, hey, it's super polarized. It, it's not really going to break down that easily. And um, yeah, you know what, this, this would have been a good first trade. So it was, it was a good first trade. And you can see, I, I did um, have the trade here. It was starting to hold its move and I was becoming a little uncomfortable with this trade. So you'll notice that I actually closed this order pretty quick. So actually from, from the time I opened this order, from the time I closed it, it wasn't that long. I think I sat in the trade maybe 20 minutes and I just took an exit price at, um, at 556 because at that point I was like, you know what, this thing is trying to break up. I'm not really looking at, um, you know, sitting in this thing until I lose money. I, I, it was my first kind of big trade of the week. So I was playing it very safe. So I took, I took my exit around 556. And my plan was that this first knife catch is going to always execute. And it's going to allow me to lock up four or $500 on this trade. It ended up being 582 after fees. It was something like 500. I always limit exit my, my orders and never market close unless I absolutely have to. Um, that this, this would allow me to take re-entry on that trade if it was still in failure, which you can see by locking up that first 500, it was really important to get that because it gave me the room to kind of take another trade on this thing and lose that part of the range. So in, in this trade, if you ended up going to a pattern like this, where this level had hit, it pulled back and it was breaking up, I would be at a complete loss. But instead of that, by being able to exit here, and take re-entry on this trade, I would be able to say, hey, if this breaks up and loses its polarity, I'm just forfeiting my profits from this trade. So this was a really important first trade for me and my strategy to just simply lock up enough that I could take another trade on this range and, and just say like, okay, I want to take a double-ended trade here and, uh, and lock that up. So you can see shortly after I exited here, I opened a new short up at 577. So I took kind of two shorts on this range, right? 577, I took a new short here. 11 Bitcoin, I scaled it up at this point. So what I want people to pay attention to is this column here and how the amounts that I'm trading on these trades. Now, remember, this is 100x trading. So your margin of error is super, super thin, but I only trade 100x and that's only how I train my students because 100x trading is just, to me, it's the, the best form there is. Um, completely controllable as, as long as you know what you're doing, which you'll see on my order books as we go through this video. 11 Bitcoin, I did scale up these profits into this trade. So this becomes a very normalized strategy that I do. When I start with 500, I grind it to higher amounts and then I'm constantly increasing that. Unless I think the trade is risky and I'm saying like, I can make profits here, but I'm not really willing to risk a big amount, but I'm okay with making a smaller amount of profits. At that point, you will see me sometimes scale down my trade. So I did, I did increase it here at 577, which um, by the looks of this chart, probably would have been an origin level, like right here. Um, yeah, 584. So 587. And then where do I exit that trade? So let's go to the next page here. Uh, and then I exit that trade at 503 and uh, $825 lockup on that trade. So $825 on that trade. Um, I exited at 503. It was a pretty quick trade. It was just a nice little scalp from right here to what looks like right down here, kind of the bottom of the move. Assumingly, um, I took this trade to kind of the bottom of this range here. So what was the price? 503, I believe. 
Yep, 503. So I'm assuming that I took the price right down to um, what would have been this right here, which would have kind of been the origin level on the move. That, that's what would have had to hold if this thing was going to move up. So again, I was just saying like, hey, this thing could possibly break up here. If it holds this part of the move, it's going to move up and I'm not, not really willing to forfeit the profit. So just very methodical reason as to why I'm exiting here. No, nothing to do with I think it's going down long term, just more importantly, focusing on the trades that make sense and that are kind of guaranteed positions. Because if I can scale up my account and constantly focus on these guaranteed trades that have to hit these points in order to move up, if I can just take profits on those points that are automatic points that have to move the chart up, it doesn't matter if they break down. I can just make my profits walk away and take a lot of these like automatic perfect trades, right? Um, so that was that trade. Let's keep going here. Uh, nothing on this again. You're going to see a lot of canceled orders with zero realized PL with zero executed because these are just simply orders I'm putting on the books trying to get filled on. Uh, again, nothing here. Oh, we've got one right here fully filled. So what's this one here? Um, 0707. It was a long and the price was 21903. So let's go 21903. So 21903 would have been up in this range somewhere. So assumingly, I'm just going to mark the first level I see on my chart. 21903 would have been like this guy here, or maybe something off the back of this. So we can just kind of hit the replayer tool here, go inside this and uh, probably something like this. I'm, I'm assuming one of one of these parts of the range, 21903. Maybe, maybe I entered in this move somewhere. I'm not exactly sure, but that's okay. We don't need to find the pinpoint moment. We're just kind of looking through the trades. So, so 21903 is where I longed. And then we exited the trade 20 minutes later at 2201, 22,000 exact, 21903. To 22,000. So looks like I tried to enter down here. Maybe I entered right here on the move, 21,903. And I probably took this as an exit, thinking that this was going to hold it down. So, so, so something like this right here, 20,000 20, um, would have been, you know, a very localized part of the move, maybe something like this. And I, I front ran the target because again, this would have been the breakout point to make it go higher. So again, just one of these guaranteed spots. Like I'm, I'm taking a very specific type of trade at this point. You, you can make a lot more profits if you're holding these things, but it wasn't really the point. The point was to compound the account so I could take one big massive like guaranteed spot because there's lots of different ways you can do this. You can go into swing trades where you're holding them longer term. You're taking these polarity points and going for the longer term moves. But if you're just kind of constantly saying 500 to 1,000 to 2,000 to 4,000 and you're taking these auto lockup spots, it becomes a very simple methodical thing that you could just rinse repeat. You can see these kind of positions the whole time I'm trading because this is the only style of trading I was focused on. Uh, go again, open long at what price? 21,546. So let's find 21,546 on the ninth. So we're going to just, uh, go to the 15 minute candle here, toss this replay tool off. 21,546 would have been over here. So 21,546 and it would have been on the ninth, which is this day here. So I'm, I'm assuming it was, it would have been around right around here. 21,546. So you've got this here, 21,520. 21,546. So let's cut the replay tool off. I'm assuming it's got to be in here, right? So it kind of has to be in here. So 21,546. So it would have been this level right here. Would have been a little bit of a risky spot because it pulls pulls down a bit. Um, you you ultimately do go after the the deeper level here, which is fine. You can't you can't control that when that happens. And, and I probably took this spot right here. Um, surprised my stop loss didn't get hit, but maybe I had a reason for it. I don't remember every single trade. 21,546. Let me go to the next page down here. And um, it was just a very, very small lockup. It looks like I just thought this trade was going to um, explode. And I, and I just took a small profit shot here. So three, I want to check the timing on this trade, actually. So I opened this trade at 13.12. And I closed this trade at 13.43. So I had stayed in for about half an hour. So it looks like... Um, Here's two five minute count. So it looks like when it was pulling back, I probably just took my exit on the trade and just said like, yeah, I, I'm no longer interested that this has become way too risky. The problem with this trade is if it goes down to a point like this to try to hold, I'm in a big loss with a scaled account at this point. I'm in a big loss and, and I'm hoping that it holds while I'm in negatives. That's never a scenario you want to be in. And um, close long, open long. Maybe I'm actually, it, it kind of looks like I maybe misclicked this here because within one minute later, oh no, 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 sorry. I didn't see the 17. So four hours later, I opened along at 21,413. Yeah, 21,413. And it, it, this is something we need to talk about. I am not trading on this account full time. You, you can see there's very in sporadic trading. So this was actually only trading for about an hour a day. 
for the most part of this, this was only about an hour a day of trading. So 1743, I opened along at 21413. So I open along at 21413. Let's take the uh, replay tool off. Got to go all the way back here, to the ninth, right? Twenty one four thirteen. Did I read that right? Is it a long I opened? Open long. Twenty one four thirteen. Oh, it's not a filled order. What am I doing, dude? My brain. It sucks. Fully filled, fully filled. So it looks like I entered a trade here and then exited shortly after right here. So it looks like it was just trade failure and I just took a small, small exit on this one. It looks like I just did a limit order. You can see right here, it's a limit order. It's not a stop or anything like that. It's just looks like I probably took a target and uh, it was failing. We can go look at that one there. Um, you know what? That's not an important one. Let's just keep, let's just keep rolling through. Fully filled right here. So we've got on the 11th. So you'll notice there's no trades on the, from the 9th until the 11th. There's the 10th. I didn't trade at all. I tried to take a few trades. Again, I'm only trading for about an hour a day doing this. So the results are pretty, you know, spectacular given the fact that I only um, trading for an hour a day. Oh, so, okay, so we got 7, 11, open long, 2384. 2384 is where? 2384 on 7, 11. Here's 11, 23, So it looks like I'm entering right in around here, like maybe a reverse level here, 384, or maybe this level, or maybe even something a little higher. Irregardless, this is where I entered this kind of price range here. So it would have been here or here or here. It could have it could have been this guy right here. It could have held it. It actually looks like it would have been this one right here, maybe on a reverse level. Um, nine o'clock on the dot. Is that kind of close? Fully filled, 9.32. Yeah, so that would have been the one. So this is at nine o'clock and this is at like kind of 9.30 would have been right here. So I got filled right on that candle right there. And let's see what happens next. Uh, nothing. Looks like I'm just sitting in this trade. Uh, order filled, 2,000 profits. Notice I'm at nine Bitcoin now, scaling this up a bit. Take my exit at 6.01 at 11.46. So 6.01, which would have been right here at the top. So took my exit. We can delete this one. We can delete that one. They're, they're no longer needed. Looks like I took my exit really close to the top here at uh, 6.01. So so I entered here and I uh, took took exit right there. So that was a nice profit there, uh, $2,000 profits. My account's getting healthy at this point. Um, I took, so, so this one was kind of, this one kind of sucked because this was a great trade. I was actually up $1,200 in this trade and um, I had my stop loss set, but, the, but Bitcoin moved instantly the other direction and it blew through my stop loss by about $500. So it should have only lost two to $300 on this trade because my stop loss was pretty tight. I remember this trade, but it instantly blew through. And sometimes that can happen when you have like a one second dump and uh, it, it has to close on what the market price is. It's the best possible price it can close. So that, that was a little bit of a bummer because I had just come off a big $2,000 win and I took a $788 loss because of a, a, a silly market thing, but it, it happens, right? And you'll notice I have very insporadic trading. I'm not getting a lot of positions filled here. And I'm gonna talk about that at the end of the video here. Filled order, exit negative $46, nothing to really talk about. Oh, we missed one there. Another one, nothing really to talk about, uh, 713, so 848, so, so an 11 minute trade, locked up $200, no big deal. Fully filled, what's this one? So, looks like I have an open short, close short. Only two of the 11 Bitcoin were filled. Right, so, so this trade here, this was, this was a decent trade and you can see I'm scaling up my account. Now I'm using 11 Bitcoin. I tried to exit at this price here, 19,566. And then I remember this one closed shortly after, closed 576. So kind of went through one of these moves where, um, well, we can find it actually. Price was 19,664 on the 13th. 19,664 on the 13th. 19,664. So it would have been up here, right? 19. 13th, where's 19664? Okay, so maybe it's like in and around here. Maybe it's 19664, huh? Let's just mark that and find where that is. Is that where I opened or closed it? Fully filled 19664, early in the morning on the 13th. So the 13th, early in the morning, 664. Okay, so I took this right here. So it's, it would have been right here. So, so I took this trade right here. 664 and where did I close this thing looks like I probably closed it way too soon 
Uh, again, though, I'm just because I'm scaling up, I'm just looking on taking automatic spots. So 566 is where I closed it. So I closed it down right down here. So it, it's not a these aren't none of these are like great trades. None of these are like amazing. Oh my God, look at this trade because they could have had much more profits. But again, this was just a certain strategy I was doing. So it hits this and I exited there and I tried to get a re-entry and I think I missed that one. I think I missed the re-entry. So that's what happens on this trade. So I was trying to take a two-ended entry. 11.54. What's the next trade? A lot of zeros on the board, which we're going to talk about. This one here was another one that Bitcoin had hit my stop loss on and it had snapped right through a level. So I got hit twice with that in one week, actually. I got hit twice with that, which was really crappy because that's negative 1,200. So again, I was feeling really bad. I took a short, this thing broke its move. Everybody saw it on stream, broke its move and just moved up instantly in like a one minute candle. And I ended up, um, you know, down 1,200 on that trade. A little, little crappy. And then here was the final trade where um, you can see I scaled up my Bitcoin at that point. At that point, I had taken this trade was a little higher in risk and there was two trades. So this was part of a two-ended trade. And there's a very specific reason I did. So I'm going to go talk about this. Um, so this is on the 14th and the price is 22.64 on the 14th. So this was a point on the 14th right here, 22.64, right. So, so this was a, a hyper polarized move in the trades, 22.664. I believe that's what this trade was. This was right here, um, 169, 264. So this thing had, I had entered right here, somewhere in here, 169, right here. And it instantly moved up and uh, just, just crushed me. And then the next trade was a long that I knew was gonna hold, and this was at 2203. So at 2203, this was kind of polarized in the move. So when you broke this move, there was only two things that can happen. It can hold this and just rip straight up because this was like a very hyper polarized moment. So that's why I shorted it. And, and when it completely moved up in one candle, it was so obvious that it was going to be the perfect relong spot. So then I relonged right here and uh, just let it ride. And, I, and, and that was like a very obvious spot, 2203, which was... This level had hit and then I had entered right in here somewhere. It was somewhere in here that I had entered. I think, I think it would have been like a one minute level or something. It would have been like this one right here, this one here, follow the trail right there. Yeah, and so, so this move was holding. You know, it was so obvious to enter there on this trade. And um, this thing had just spiked right up after. And, and this trade, when we were on stream, I had mentioned that I should stay in this for three or 4% because this trade would be a huge trade because it just broke polarity. But the point of this challenge was not to make money. It was to show how I could raise an account from 500 to 5,000 or to, you know, 10,000. And, and that was a very, very quick and easy way to do it. And at that point it was just close a trade because the goal of 7,500 had been hit. So it was very simple to just close it at the, uh, at the level it would get to. So you can see how much Bitcoin I used. This originally started as a $500 account. And then, um, just goes to 375, kind of the, the, the first moment that could reject it just to get the lockup on the trade. So you've got 375, which would have been roughly right here. And I just front ran it a little bit. Um, you know, so my sell price would have been here in this first wake up. And then it does, it does break up and go over. And, and I did give full, you know, warning on stream that this is I'm selling here to prove a point, not to make money. I don't usually trade with $500, but it was a good challenge. And uh, that's how I did it. That's how I turned you know, from, from the 6th to the 14th, which is a span of, what, eight days from, from the 6th to the 14th trading, um, how I did a $500 account. Well, there was one day before. So that's why I said nine days, because there was a day before where I took like literally trade after trade after trade after trade, building the $500 account up. But to, to go through all those would make this video like two hours long. We're already going on 20 over, over 20 minutes on this video. So there's no, there would be no point to go and, and do that. So I want to give a few disclaimers about this video here. I want to give a, a few disclaimers about how I did this, why I did this, uh, what this is. Um, first off, I only trade 100x trading. And, and for me, when I start with $500, typically I start with 5,000. So 7,400 would be equatable to, because I don't take $500 trades. I'm usually doing 5,000 and then... Um, 10 day span, it would have been a $74,000 gain, right? So that's, it's a little different. This was more out of principle because I wanted to trade with the same amount of money that I, that I have my teams trading with my day trading teams. 
they, I give them, I sponsor them $500 each every week. I just give them $500 out of my own pocket. I, I stream it. It's very fun. It's called Chart Raiders. It's on Twitch, twitch.tv slash cottoncandyta. It's a lot of fun. And, and it's my way of supporting my community and trying to help others build a career. So about 20 people, I give them $500 each. It costs me a small fortune, but, and, and they're still learning. So they lose money and then I give them more money. And it's, it's like kind of a good and bad thing. They get good experience and learning, but I do it to support my community. And I do it to, um, you know, give back to people who, who support me as well. So, this, so, so it's a really cool full circle thing. But I wanted to prove to them, my students more than anybody else, that you can do this no matter what. You can take a $500 account and build a future off of it. And, and then to record that and show it to the world and do it live on Twitch with people because all these trades were taken live on Twitch, every single one of them. So people watched every single trade. There was no trades taken off of stream. Um, and, and the reason why I put this here is because I actually did uh, where did I put it? I actually did take this account from 500 to 12,800, but I didn't do the final trade on stream. I actually did take one final trade and I brought it up to 12,800, but I didn't do it on stream. So I don't count it in this equate equatability, but this was within, um, one more day after I stopped the challenge 7,400. I traded one day final after just to take one final trade. Cause it was really good with the account. And I, and I got it up to 12,800, which is, again, we're just going to remark this to 74 because that's what people saw live on stream. That's what is we're showing in this video verifiable. So people can't sit there and say, oh, because this was completely I did this, you know, just using uh, my work and my science. So a couple disclaimers, anybody can do this. You just have to learn how to use my science. And that's a tough, tough um, kind of road to go down. I don't I don't charge anything for it. It's all free on YouTube. There's not there's just literally simple. Uh, if you want to learn how to day trade, I, I give it for free on YouTube. I have a patron page with the discord community. You can join if you want but it's not required. Anybody can just go on my YouTube, learn this stuff for free. There's no programs to buy into, nothing like that. It's just completely free, 100%. Learn it, use it, change your life. Cool. Say thank you. Awesome. Spread, spread the love kind of thing. And so that's the first thing. It's like anybody can do this. And, and I just showed how to do it. And I shared one of my strategies in when I do it and, and how I do it. Um, number two is I only do 100x trading. People say it's gambling. It's really not. If you know what you're doing, if you know how these, these sciences work in these markets, um, it's really not gambling. It's um, Again, this, this is not, none of this video is financial advice, of course, but I don't find it as gambling, especially when I have like a 99% accuracy ratio and I have for, for been doing this for how long? For five years, people have been seeing me do this stuff. But then to actually show it on screen is a different thing. To show it live, streaming it live has really invigorated my community. It's really going to help a lot of people say like, look, like it can be done. It's not just something people talk about. People aren't crazy when they say, you know, like, oh, I could make it as a day trader. You can, and it's, and it's real and it's there and you can learn it for free. It doesn't cost anything, but you're, your time and your brain, right? Like that's it, mind, mind power and uh, your time. So anybody can do it. Another thing, another disclaimer is that be safe, study like crazy, go, go, and, go and do like six months to a year of studying day trading. Study my sciences. I have literally hundreds of videos that will take you months and months, if not half a year, if not a full year to get through them all. Study like crazy and don't jump in until you're ready. Paper trade, 100x is extremely tough. It's the pro leagues. There's nothing harder than 100x in crypto. It's like, it's, it would be like the equivalent of trading 1,000 dex in Forex or, or 1,200 or 2,000. I've even heard of 2,000 dex in Forex, which is crazy. I've only myself seen 1,200, but um, you know, it would be the equivalent of trading 1,000 dex in Forex. So the, 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 the speed that Bitcoin moves at and the margin for error is so thin and like you can't make mistakes in Bitcoin because it moves at lightning speeds, but you don't, you don't make mistakes when you know exactly what's happening in the charts. So Anybody can do it. Anybody can learn it. If, if there's anything that can prove it, it's, it's this order book that shows you exactly every single trade I took for, for eight days when I made this challenge for the first time live. This wasn't pre-recorded. This wasn't pre-staged. This wasn't like we attempted this five or six times. A community asked me to trade alongside the teams. And I said, hey, hey guys, do you want to see it? Fine. Let's do it live on Twitch. Screw it. We'll do it. And we just did it live on the spot. And then we did eight days and, and that's what we did to the account. And it wasn't multiple attempts. There wasn't any restarts. There wasn't any account liquidations, nothing like that. So, um, it just goes to show that with hard work, anybody can make it in these markets. It just takes a lot of studying, a lot of devotion and don't jump into hundred X until you're certain just study for a year or two first, like seriously, go do paper trading, go do spot trading, scale up small and, and slightly. This is extremely high level professional stuff when you're doing hundred X at these levels. Like if you want to try hundred X, do it with like a $2 trading size for the, for the, for, for, for months and then get into it. You know what I mean? And, uh, if you want to watch how we do it and my traders do it, we do it on, on Twitch. I do it on chart on, on, uh, twitch.tv slash cotton candy TI. I do chart raiders, which is a cool competition. World's first esports meets, meets day trading. And it's really cool. And everybody loves it. 
And uh, I'm glad I could share this little piece of, of magic with everybody today. And hopefully you can get something out of this video and see that if, if anything, um, you can verify that there's a future for you and that anybody can do it. And um, hopefully you can take from my strategy, adapt it and use it as your own and kind of say like, hey, cool, this is the way Cotton does it. Let me try to see how that works out for me. And hey, hey, maybe you'll, maybe you'll get something cool. So, all right, until the next video, see you all later.